The first half of 2023 is complete. This week is in many ways the turning point for the year in housing. Home purchases start to decelerate, prices decline for the second half of the year. Inventory usually peaks soon. The best inventory gets listed in the first half of the year. And later in the summer you list, the later, the more likely you are to do so with a little discount. To make sure the house isn't sitting on the market after school starts or then later in the year as, as we approach the holidays. This year has had some big surprises, of course. Six months ago, we expected an extension of last fall where inventory would keep rising due to ultra low demand, but demand stabilized and uh, new supply was even more rare, which led to declining inventory and home prices holding up. Mortgage rates seem to be climbing again though, so consumers are definitely sensitive to the affordability challenges that that creates. Each week, of course, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, and we make it available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. We've been looking in the data to see how fragile this real estate market is in the face of consistently higher mortgage rates and why now it seems like it's the rapidly changing rates that, that are the risks. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the founder of Altos Research. Let's take a look at the data at the peak of the home buying season at the end of June, 2023. There are now 467,000 single family homes on the market around the US. That's 2% fewer than last year at this time. Last year, of course, inventory was climbing by four, five, six percent per week. And last year, the story was how much demand had slowed. This year, the story is how new supply has simply ceased. While demand for homes isn't great, the it's been obviously greater than the quantity supplied. Now, as we roll into the second half of the year, We'll see if mortgage rates over 7% slow the market again, like last year, and let inventory build, or if sellers remain scarce and, and inventory starts falling again. Uh, depending on lots of variables, the peak of inventory is usually July or August. Last year, inventory didn't peak until late October. As of right now, it looks like we'll end the year with about 15% fewer homes on the market than we ended last year. Home buyers are keeping prices elevated by buying basically all that is offered at these prices and at these mortgage rates. So we'll adjust that forecast if mortgage rates change materially higher or lower from here. Uh, lower rates means generally lower inventory. Higher rates means greater inventory. I've been kind of harping on this message lately. I think it's a misconception that we need rates to fall again to get more inventory. The data shows that it's actually the other way around. Higher rates yield more inventory over time. Lower rates will mean we'll hold more homes and have less inventory. You can see the, the, that the rate of home sales has peaked for the year. Uh, that happens at this time of year, and it'll do a big dip this week with the holiday. There are 385,000 single-family homes in contract right now. That's 14% fewer than last year. Uh, the per this percentage fewer sales from last year has been steady for six weeks in a row now. We'd been gaining ground, uh, but as rates jumped in May, home buyers slowed just a bit, and so that we're not gaining ground on the sales rate any more. Uh, home sales slowed in July and dramatically in September last year. So hopefully we'll see some transaction volume improvements in the second half of this year. There were 66,000 newly pending homes this week, home sales this week. The, 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 that rate continues to be below last year. But like I mentioned, last year's market turned dramatically after the 4th of July holiday. Uh, it's the holiday week now, and so next week's report will have that big drop in activity again, of course. In this chart, the height of the, each bar is the total number of homes in contract in a given week. The light portion of the bar are those newly in contract. Uh, watch this chart in the coming weeks to see how quickly home sales volume declines in the second half 
of 2023. You can see how quickly that light portion of the bar shrank in the second half of last year. And that was really those the demand uh, dropping, dropping very quickly. Uh, here's what we know about home sales. People are mostly adjusted to higher mortgage rates. Uh, the, there are buyers at these home prices and these mortgage rates, but buyers are sensitive to big changes in the rates. So if mortgage rates surge from seven to seven and a half, for example, like they did in September last year, uh, we'll have a dramatically slower autumn again this year. Uh, so this recovery that we've had could very easily see another downturn. Uh, we can see this housing demand sensitivity in the price reductions data too. For the most, for most of this year, the price reductions curve tells the story of market recovery. Demand has exceeded available supply of homes, so fewer homes need sellers need to take a price cut, and price cuts always accelerate in the second half of the year. Last year, that's the light red line here. Last year, the, the percentage of homes on the market with price cuts was just skyrocketing each week. This year, there are only 32.3% of the homes on the market which have taken a price reduction. The slope of the dark red curve here shows a much more balanced market than last year. It also shows us that the homes that sell in July and August, they already have price support because the sellers now have the demand that they don't need to do the, the price cut so that the offers come in and the sales will happen in this month and next month. Uh, in a couple of weeks, the market will have fewer price reductions than last year at this time. Uh, certainly the pace of cuts is, last year was so dramatic and this year is so obviously more stable. You, the, that really shows you the leading indicator power of this data. Uh, we could see the steep reduction in demand happening last year at this time. It was very obvious. But it was three to six months before you know, the sales happened, before the prices actually started turning negative. So we can see the recovery of home buyer demand starting in Q1 of this year. And now we can see that home the impact on the home price sales prices now. Uh, in September last year, price reduction spiked than usual, and you could see the second spike in the light red line last year. Uh, and that happened just as mortgage rates spiked as well. That could happen again this year if rates jump now. So keep your eyes on this chart each week. The median price of single family homes in the US is $455,000 again this week. That's been unchanged for several weeks in a row now. And it's a fraction below last year at this time. As I mentioned, June 30th is the peak time for home prices. And last year, prices started their quick downtrend right now. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see if by July, this indicator of home prices hasn't actually swung to positive year over year. The light red line here is the median price of the new listings each week. And the, the 4th of July holiday always has a, has a discount on the new listings, of course. Uh, last year was a big dip. So by next week, we could be showing positive home price increases over last year in the price of the new listings. Uh, the median price of those new listings in that cohort this week is $415,000 compared to four nineteen dollars last year. Uh, the light red line here is also a lot more noisy, so it bounces around. So we need multiple weeks really to confirm the trend, but the fact remains that the second half of the last year corrected down very quickly, and you can see how steep that the light red line fell last in the second half of last year. So all the year-over-year -year comparisons start to get much easier from here on out. And uh, there are four home price indicators, uh, and as they grow more positive, they're not actually really growing. Home prices aren't like surging, but it's just that the headlines will no longer report home prices falling. They're not falling. They, they've held, they fell in July and September of last year. Um, but they're pretty stable and they've been stable and strong all year. Uh, there are four of these four home price, Altos home price measures to pay attention to. There's the price of the new listings each week. That's the, the light red line. There's the price of the total active market each week. That's the dark red line here. There's the price of the 
newly into contract, the new pendings each week where the sales are happening. And then there's the fourth one is the price of all the homes pending in the contract pending stage at any given time. So of those four, the price of the newly sales, the new pending sales has been positive year over year for four weeks in a row now. This is the cohort of homes that take offers and go into contract in a given week. And they're going into contract at higher prices than they did a year ago. The, uh, after a month of those new pendings being positive, the median price of all the pendings is now positive last versus last year by just a little bit uh, for the first time in months. So this is a chart of the new pendings. And the, this week, the median price of the homes that went into contract is $380,000. That's down 1% 1, 1 from last week, but 1.5% uh, higher than a year ago. So the, see the dark red line here is now consistently above last year for four weeks in a row. The annual comparison will get another boost in September, and we could end the year uh, even more strongly year over year. Uh, that, that big dip in sales prices in September last year teaches how sensitive home buyers are to changes in mortgage rates. I've been pretty optimistic in general in, the, in this week's report, but know that market sentiment can change abruptly if rates jump again. The economic news has been strong enough and inflation has been persistent enough that higher rates from here I mean, seem like a real possibility. The, the, I always caution though, that I do not predict mortgage rates, uh, and I really have no idea where, where rates go from here. So we're just gonna report on how the housing market is acting at any given time. The end of June is always the transition point for the housing market for the year. This year, you'll see the headlines start to change too. The basic fact remains true. Home buyers and sellers need to know what's happening. They, they have a lot of opinions, there's a lot of noise to filter, and so they need you to get them the actual data as soon as it becomes available. If you need to communicate about what's happening in the local market as it happens, go to altosresearch.com and book a free consult with our team. We will help you interpret this crazy market for your clients right now. It's a critical time to be properly informed about the market. Please join us.